reasons. First off, this is a fantastic game. It's one of the best games ever made in my opinion, and for that reason this one is my own personal pick of the week. And also something interesting about this campaign is that I don't actually think there's anything new offered in this campaign because this is a game that was offered previously, and usually with crowdfunding when they do bring a game back they usually need to add something new. But I guess since this is an Awakened Realms game and GameFound is owned by Awakened Realms then they can kind of do whatever they want, but it doesn't look like they're adding anything new to the game and I'm not too upset with that because this is already a game that has a ton of expansions, a ton of content. Don't get me wrong, I want and own most of it and I'll come back to that in a minute here. And if there was new content I would probably be thinking pretty hard about getting that as well because this is a game that's never leaving my collection. But if I'm being real here this is a game that has more than enough just with its base content and it's an amazing game just with that. But of course with this being a game produced by Awaken Realms there's going to be a ton of extra content and miniatures and deluxifications that you can add onto your pledge. And I don't recommend all of these, and I'll come back to that at the end of my coverage for this game. But there's some really nice improvements here that I think this game does deserve. But if you're not familiar with how the original game plays, this is a game where each player is going to be starting the game with their own personal player board. And on your board, you're going to be having this section in the middle that's going to outline different requirements for placing tiles out on that board. And there's a whole stack of these sheets that you can swap in and out of your board that makes the possibilities of this game almost endless. And if you want to play a game where everyone's using the same sheets in their board, you can do that. But there's also no problem with players having different sheets as well if you do want a bit of asymmetry. But the main board's broken into a few different areas, and each round you're going to be semi-randomly assigning tiles to each of those locations. And the reason I say it's semi-randomly is that you are drawing the tiles randomly from a bag, but each colored tile is going to have their own colored bag that it's associated with. And you're going to be drawing one of each color of a set of colors for each of those locations. The rules for this one are pretty simple. The game just plays over five different rounds, and each round players are going to have their own dice that they're going to be rolling in order to determine the actions that they have available to them them because you're going to be spending a die for each of your actions and the different options that you have are to spend a die matching the value of one of the different locations that are on the main board in order to draft a tile from that location and when you draft a tile it's going to be going into this reserve here in the bottom section of your board and you can only hold three tiles at once. This is where your other option comes into play because you can also spend a die in order to place one of the tiles in your reserve onto one of the locations on your board. And there are a few restrictions here. First of all, you always have to play a tile next to a tile that's already in play. And then also you have to place a tile on a location that matches its color. And also that location has to have the value of the die that you spent in order to do it. The nice thing about this is that there is some flexibility with the value of your dice any time that you spend a die because you can also spend worker tokens in order to modify that value up or down. And there's different ways to get those worker tokens throughout the game, but the most common way is the third action option, and that's just to spend a die in order to take two worker tokens. There is just one more action you could perform by spending a die rather than the other three options, and that's to spend a die to sell a stack of goods that matches the value of that die. Players can also only hold three different stacks of goods, but if you're getting the same type of good, you can add them to a stack that you already have. And the way that you get goods in this game is that there's going to be a neutral die that the first player is going to be rolling every round, and then whatever location that die indicates, that location is going to be getting a goods tile. These are going to be accumulating in the different locations as the game goes on, and any time that you place one of the ship tiles on your board, that's going to allow you to take the goods from any one location and add them to your player board. When you do spend a die to sell these goods, you're going to be choosing just one stack to sell, so you do want it to be as large as possible because it's always going to be gaining you a coin, but then it's going to be earning you victory points equal to the number of goods in that stack, and then you'll just be discarding those back into the supply. And those are all the actions you can perform by spending your dice, but there is one more action that you can take on your turn if you can afford to do it, and that's to spend two coins in order to take any of the tiles located in the center of the board. And these tiles are kind of special because they do come from their own bag, just like each of the other colors. But what's special about these ones is that the face upside of that tile can be any color. So although these are their own unique set of tiles, any combination of colors can show up here, giving a lot of flexibility and options to the players that can afford them. I'm just going to go through each of the different types of tiles here so you can understand how they differ from each other because the first ones are the castle tiles and any time that you get to place one of these out on your board, they essentially act like a free action as if you had a extra die of any value that you wanted. This means that you can use that action to perform any of the different actions that you could perform with a die, and you also get to choose that value. Lots of flexibility here, and that's what makes the castle so special. 
But then we also have the beige tiles, which when you place them out on your board, they're going to give you a one-time ability that you'll be able to take advantage of. And then also we do have the different animal tiles. And whenever you're placing these out, they're going to be earning you victory points equal to the number of animals on that tile. But anytime that you connect these tiles to another tile or set of tiles that share the same animal, you not only get to score the points on that tile, but also all the animals on the tiles that are connected to it. So this is a great way to try and get a ton of points if you're able to create large pastures of all the same animals. The yellow tiles also do give you special abilities, but these ones are more ongoing abilities that you'll be able to take advantage of throughout the entirety of the game, or they might also be different scoring opportunities that you'll be able to take advantage of at the end of the game. These gray mine tiles are pretty nice because they do gain you a coin for every round, and other than that, coins are pretty difficult to get in this game. And like I said, you can use those coins to purchase those special tiles in the center of the board. And then we have the boats, which I did already explain. They do move you up the player order track. And player order is really important in this game because there's going to be tiles that you really, really want to get. And if you have first dibs on the board, you can at least guarantee that you are going to be getting one of those. But other than that, the boats do also allow you to take goods from the main board and then add them onto your own personal board. And I did already mention a couple ways that you can gain victory points in this game, either by selling those good tiles or by gaining those yellow tiles that offer some sort of scoring opportunities at the end of the game. But one of the main ways of scoring victory points in this game is by completing the different regions on your board, because anytime that you complete a region, you're going to be cashing in a number of victory points depending on the size of that region and also depending on how early you completed it in the game. Not only that, but if you're able to complete all of a particular color on your board, you're also going to be gaining victory points for that, but whoever does this first is going to be getting the most victory points. Players also gain victory points for any coins, workers, or unsold goods at the end of the game, but then after all of that is tallied up, the player with the most victory points wins the game. And I did mention that this is one of my favorite games of all time, and normally when that's the case, I'm pretty much willing to buy everything for that game. But I did also mention that I didn't buy everything, and there is a reason for that, and I'll just go ahead and let you know what I did buy and what I didn't. And I guess the easier way to tell you what I bought is to tell you what I didn't buy, because it's really just one thing, and that is the miniatures box for this game. And the reason that I don't recommend buying this is, well, it is a lot of extra money and it is a lot of extra content to store. But on top of all of that, this is also an upgrade that just makes the game more fiddly because this is a game where you're drawing tiles from a bag and you're not really able to draw miniatures from a bag. So if you do want to incorporate these miniatures into your game, that means you either have to have the cardboard tiles or the acrylic tiles anyway, and then draw those out of the bag. And then once you draw that tile, you essentially discard it somewhere and then take the appropriate miniature that represents that tile. So it's just adding a few extra steps here. And these miniatures do look really cool. And if you think that's worth the extra headache of owning them and going through that extra motion anytime that you draw a tile, Sure, go ahead and buy them, but for me, I don't think it's worth it. And those acrylic tiles are already really, really nice, and they don't add any additional fiddliness to the game, and they just work seamlessly with how the game was originally designed. The cool thing about this is that the miniatures for the castles actually come with the core game, so even if you don't get the miniatures expansion, you will have the miniatures for the castles, and I really like that because each player can just keep their castle miniatures with them, and when they get that castle tile, they can just take one of the miniatures that they have next to them and put them into play. Players can only have a maximum of four castles on the board, so keeping those four castles next to you isn't a whole lot of extra fiddliness to add to the game, and I think it is fun to make the castles stand out a little bit since they are a centerpiece of the game, and it's literally in the name. Other than the additional miniatures, I pretty much recommend everything else offered in this campaign, but if you did want to save a little bit more money, I would probably drop the playmat because playmats are really just useful for when you have cards to pick up off of a table because it makes picking them up a little bit easier. But this game doesn't have any cards, so you don't have to worry about that. But honestly, if you just want to purchase the core game, I think that's a really great way to go about it because the expansions don't really make this game what it is. Everything that you need to play this game is offered in the core game. It's an excellent game as is, and it completely stands on its own. But no matter how you play this game, it's going to be an awesome experience no matter what, because it's just such a great design. And if you do want to check it out, I will have a link down below. And of course, you can follow along to get notified. And like I said, I don't think there is anything new offered in this campaign, but I'm just going to follow along with it and check it out just in case. They did say in the comment section that they're not going to be adding any new stretch goals. But things do change, so if this is a game that you're super interested in and you want to make sure you have everything, I probably would check it out once at least before it ends.